They got stipular. Today we're checking out the Schleif. Of course, we got Silex and their secondary builds. Oh yeah. This thing, is it the king of secondaries? Debatable. You could definitely make the case. It's probably uh, the king of secondaries. Mine's 12.6 kilometers. Uh, you'll see him in action in this game. Uh, here we got a game on it's a trap. domination mode, of course. Um, I don't think there's any other mode on trap. But here we are, A side. Now, I'd like to really get this thing in on the B side. You'd like to get in there uh, where the enemy ships have a tough time disengaging with you. But we're going to be lucky that we uh, wind up on A here because we're going to have the tools to change the game early. And from there, it's just going to be... Uh, good old-fashioned barn burner, as they say. So, we're going to talk about the Schlieffen and take a look at it here. And, of course, legendary tier game, so we're going to have to take an opportunity to comment about uh, goofy legendary tier positioning. Uh, very bizarre, the thought process that goes on here, but we're going to see it in uh, full swing as the game develops. So, of course, strap yourselves in for that. It always gets interesting. But here we're... Okay, well, something's going on with these guys. I always like to check these guys... Uh, to see who's actually awake, who's buffing their Dewey, who's doing God knows what. Just to see what's going on, you know. If you're serious about the game, you're probably going to hit ready and keep the controller in your hand. If you're not that serious, you're going to hit ready and then go do God knows what these guys are doing all the time. Uh, watching TikTok, probably. <laughs> There's a lot of funny videos on TikTok these days. Uh, but anyways, yeah. Uh, so we're moving in. We're we're playing. We got the hands on the control here. And I'm thinking, you know, let's get on this island here. This is a fun little island to play here. Number one, you can challenge the base if possible. Uh, but you do have protection from the guys. You know, you can see the spawn north of B there closing in. If we play it right, uh, we can potentially uh, protect ourselves there. It can be a little dicey if everybody kind of on the A side and B side coordinate to shoot you in conjunction. It can be tough to protect yourself in that situation, but it's fun to try, certainly. So we're moving in here. We got a decent shot earlier there on the Rune or whoever, the Alaska, I think it was. Moving in, secondary starting off a little bit here. Don't yet have the, I got the mod, the secondary booster mod. I don't know where it is. It's probably on the uh, rubric or something. I got to go uh, ask the guys in the warehouse uh, and see if they can dismount it on that one and throw it on this puppy because this is going to be, um, definitely a ship you're going to want that for. Meta said he put it on the uh, the new Tier 8 uh, Italian, whatever that thing is. And that's a fun one, too. I can't uh, necessarily disagree with him there, but I think my uh, mod's going to find its way on here. Now we're squirting out here. We like to, when we hit the brakes, we'd like to stop. But look at this. Smoke. Okay, that's intriguing. Well, number one, and he's shooting, so he's giving us a nice aim point for the Torps. Fire up the sonar. Well, we got some range on the sonar. In fact, it's 5'7". Shima, 5-2, you're kidding me. Well, we already had the secondary booster mod, not expecting a destroyer over here. It was engaged, trying to just harass the Palmer and compare the uh, effectiveness of secondaries. You don't want to, you know, kind of like, well, I'll show you mine, you show me yours. We can always outperform the Palmer when it comes to that, but Shima pops in here, kind of just makes himself known. Uh, I don't know what he was trying to do. He didn't even launch the Torps until he was basically dead there, so, uh, you know. We'll call that one uh, legendary tier play number one. Okay, uh, so we just back up. He launches all the torps in the same line where we were when we were sitting, not expecting that we were going to back up and uh, you know dodge those pretty effectively there. So now I'm saying to myself, okay, well check over there, and I see bees being captured. Destroyer's doing a great job there. Our two support ships behind there, they're probably shooting over here. Yep, we see the tracers uh, coming in uh, from that direction. So they're involved, and then we. Seem to be losing on C, but Red not pressing, and by the way, they're scoring piece of Destroyer dead. So they're going to have a little bit of a hard time capturing that base as long as our guys don't turn tail and run. Uh, they should eventually be able to pressure that, but we're looking at this as an opportunity, okay? Uh, positioning mistake, big time. Check out the guy to the north of us. Uh, it's one, two, three squares to the north. That's a Friedrich to Grobe, I think, or it's a Grober to Kerfrist. I don't know which one it is, but that guy... Same as this thing, you know, you get it up there close and personal. You're Joe Frazier, you get in there, Bob, and we even come in and you know, slap them hard when you get in close. Not a sniper. I don't know if they didn't read the instruction manual or if there wasn't an instruction manual included with the game. That's uh, that's definitely a possibility, too. But no pressure, all right? Now, there's a few battleships where, okay, you want to hang back. I get it. Not all of them are designed to get in close and personal. That one is, all right? And him being up there... 
you know, and the only reason I'm even being spotted right now is the Alaska fired up the sonar. Um, and now he's actually popping us into the vision range. Yeah, it's a Friedrich. Okay, so move in. Pressure. Uh, you can take me. If you guys notice when the Schlieffen's taking shots earlier, you can shoot this thing. Okay, that is, especially in legendary tier games, well, it's always going to be legendary tier game, I suppose. Uh, you know, most of the battleships for sure, and a lot of the other ships can uh, slap you around a little bit. So Schlieffen not here for a long time, here for a good time, and especially with this build, right? Oof, Alaska, my God. Check this out. Dev strike with the secondaries. Hang on! With the ripper there through the nose. He was trying to angle, but uh, you got to come in with a little more steam than that. Uh, so anyway, uh, you know, go ahead and shoot the Schlieff and uh, don't be afraid. If I if I had that Frieder pushing me, I'd probably be like, okay, uh, that's a problem. But he's uh, up way up north there, the other two guys behind the island. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab the cap. I grab the cap there. That's going to result in hundreds of plays. We got nine, or hundreds of points. We got nine minutes left, ten minutes left. And if that's... Uh, 36 points a minute that's you know north of three four hundred points as far as i can count uh now we've cleared this side and things are looking pretty good we got a three ship lead they have no destroyers and they got no cojones on this side so note what we do here and this is important if you're newer or you haven't quite figured this out yet chasing ships deep into the spawn foolhardy don't fall for that trick that's one of the oldest tricks in the book uh, but no that's not where the action is this game isn't quite over yet. It's getting pretty close. I mean, you can't sit there down three caps for long. But Reds play if they're going to make it. They got to kill. They got to get on C while killing that side. They don't even have the luxury. They're going to pursue the uh, strategy of we're going to put everybody behind islands and just kind of play it safe. Another huge problem. Uh, Red just not pressing this game like they need to. Uh, but you know, when you get in this situation, getting a cap at least frozen, if not flipped, hopefully flipped. Uh, but freezing it by getting on the cap and contesting it. You have to do that while fighting. And the longer you're down the scoring, this uh, nine points every five seconds, that's disastrous uh, for the bottom line and the win rate. But the longer that goes on, the less options you have to actually win on score. Like at this point in time, even if they, you know, they pretty much have to kill us, everybody on the team. And that's hard to do when you're down uh, five ships to eight. So I was going to ignore this guy, but he's coming back and I'm like, Everybody uh, to the uh, northeast is going more northeast away from the scoring regions of the board. So I'm like, all right, let's just make sure. Number one, I want to fight this guy. You know, I kind of want to fight him. He was running away earlier. I want to see what he's made of. Uh, but number two, we do always want to resolve the side. Now, we do have a low health uh, Burgogni or whatever that thing is out there west. Uh, we do have a Minotaur that's one shotable. Lord knows what's behind me there. Uh, but all these ships technically can be cleared by this thing in no time, right? And, you know, it would help if you would move into position where you could actually hit someone. Uh, but what I want, and I'm not ribbing on these players. This is legendary tier play. So don't say, man, this player sucks. This is everybody playing this tier, it seems like. 90% of the people, you see them on the one line. You see them on the 10 line, A line, parts of the board that the designers never even contemplated people uh, accessing. Probably, you know, it's risky. It's probably not even properly coded up there. You can might run into some bugs or something. Uh, but this is common. Don't do it. Because I was watching this guy, and I don't know if he shot his guns. He's probably shot once or twice. Uh, but battleships, you want to be shooting those main guns on reload. The damage output needs to be there continuously. Because you only get to fire every 20, 30, 25, 30 seconds, whatever it is. If you're not doing that on reload as often as possible, your damage per game is going to drop, drop, drop. Your effectiveness, win rate, everything. Your influence on the match goes down, down, down. So running, uh, preserving your full health as if that's some sort of a great thing when you're going to be the last guy on your team. Uh, 1v8 at the end of the game. Well, I got all this health. Clearly my team sucks. They all died pretty quickly. No, you suck. You haven't done anything. You abandon your team to be down numerically, which is a disaster in this game cannot be down numerically i mean that's it's designed to favor the teams that are ahead numerically so don't fall into these traps and these guys up northeast there they're not shooting they're behind the islands uh you know they're sure they were fighting somebody but again they need to be on sea and then fight those guys and if our guys don't want to fight them while they're on sea then cool they come down to b and then see who wants to fight them there uh well you know fixing the scoring situation but this has just been a disastrous game from red positionally again very common you know very very common in fact it's far less common to see a team like ours, the blue team, who actually positioned pretty well this game and uh, pressed their advantages. So obviously a lopsided uh, 
result, but it's not necessarily due to the skill of the players. Uh, but if you want to translate understanding or, or uh, willingness to pursue a winning strategy, a skill, I guess you could say they're better players, obviously. But you know, that's it's just not understand what I'm trying to do. Am I, am I trying to control the northeast corner? There's no caps up there. I can't shoot into any caps from the northeast corner. Why would I ever put my ship there unless I'm hiding at the end? We're up 300 points. I'm trying to ride out the clock or I'm a carrier. Those are the two reasons you should ever be where two of their ships are. I've, you know, there's no reason for this. So very bizarre, but very common. Far less common to see these <laughs> legendary tier players not doing this stuff. So I don't get it. I really don't get it. It's been four years. Uh, faith in humanity is completely shot by this uh, entire experiment. I just don't know how mankind has survived as long as it has, but uh, nevertheless, here we are, and that's the end of the game. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. Lots of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave below. Love to hear from you guys, and we'll see you all later. All right, peace.